Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to week number four of the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. My name is TJ Osmocuti Sanders, and this week I am joined with Gray Torp. How you doing, man? Hello, man. I'm so glad to be here, of course, casting Hearthstone. You know, Frodan was like, hey, Andre, you want to come over? Just hang out, chill out. We'll have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then you showed up. And then I showed up. Crashed the party. He, um, he lied to me. Oh, he was like, we're going to cast together. Of course, I used to be Frodan's old casting partner in mm -hmm. StarCraft II. We split off, though. He went into Hearthstone. I went into poker. We're conjoining again. But uh, he lied to me, and now you showed up. So I don't know what to believe anymore. He basically hand me down. He's handing you down to his He's like, you're his, you're his subordinate right now. Exactly. I see. Exactly. I well, see. we've already seen three weeks of the Legendary Series so far, which means we've seen three players qualify. Kalento, Life Coach, and Kabi are going to be joining us for that land finals. As far as the rest of the format for the Hearthstone Legendary Series, Greta, why don't you, since it's your inaugural oh, week, man. why don't you go ahead and explain to us L the old format. Okay. Let's hope I can. Legendary Series, one person per each Legendary Series will move on into the season finals. The land, it's going to be a lot of fun. Those Challenger Cups on the left-hand side, uh, they actually qualify people for the Legendary si Series. Six of people from each of those go into the Legendary Series where they're fighting for a chance of $3,100 for the prize pool. Two people are going to be invited. We are right now in week number four. It's May 9th, May 10th. Mm -hmm. It is. So we're going to find out who's going to move on into that uh, that spot. Only one person can move on. The Redemption Tournament, however, is going to take everybody that didn't qualify from the Legendary Series and move them into a tournament, see who pops out from there. Four people can come out of that tournament. And of course, that's going to give us eight, the last chance tournament. That is an open. So if you guys are at home and you're like, I'm better than these guys. <laughs> I can play Hearthstone better than these guys. Well, there's your chance. May 23rd, May 24th, we're going to have eight people come out of that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I should play in it because, let's be honest, I, I can make it, right? Yeah, for I sure. I, I have a lot of faith in you. The last chance open, of course, is only open to North American players since it's so close to that land finals. Anybody outside of uh, North America will not have time to get uh, a visa in time to come here to Southern California. So, of course... Last Chance Open is only open to those North American players. You can head over to LegendarySeries.com if you want more information about that. We can head over to the, the format of the actual matches now. It's going to be Conquest. Now, Conquest, of course, is sort of the standardized competitive format for Hearthstone nowadays. Blizzard uh, announced that for the Blizzard World Championship, they'll be using Conquest. So everybody that has sort of adopted it, so that way we can give out Blizzard World Championship points. Um, all matches are best of five. Uh, each player must bring three unique decks. And in order to win the best of five, they have to win one match, or one game, sorry, with all three of their decks. Winner, of course, changes. Loser can stay with the same deck they just lost with or switch it up. So it's blind pick all the way through. Yeah, it's a really interesting process. Of course, these guys don't know each other's uh, actual decks mm -hmm. inside, but they know kind of what they, you know, they like know, to go. Yeah. You know, the meta is kind of there, but it, I do see it switching up quite a bit. I mm -hmm. see a lot of different decks popping out here. Uh, I'm really interested. I know you're a lot more experienced in Hearthstone than I am, so I can't wait to just take all of the information, grab it all, and then <laughs> suck it up, eat I'm it a, up. I'm a, I'm slightly frightened by the animations. <laughs> Uh, whatever. That, it that, happens. That it happens. happens. Yeah. Uh, we want to remind you guys to keep in the conversation, of course, at ESL Hearthstone. You can uh, hashtag HLS. And, of course, you can tweet at us. Mm hmm Tell us, tell TJ, we love his information. We love it. Indeed. We or, love it. Or tell me how you would pull the information out of me. <laughs> you got to pull it out, bro. And hopefully you gotta it's, pull it out. Hopefully it's slightly less frightening than Great Torbis. Uh, also, we do want to give a big shout out to our sponsors as well. Plantronics and Gigabyte have joined us for season two of the Legendary Series. And uh, none of my information would ever be possible to come out of me. If it wasn't for those guys. So make sure you head over to those links below. Support the Legendary Series. Support eSports in general. And uh, check out some of the headsets for Plantronics. Maybe some of those motherboards from Gigabyte. Upgrade your hardware. And also, if you guys are one of those people that are like, man, I would be so much better if only I had that one card. Yeah. If only I had a little bit more dust. Well, guess what? You're in luck. Mm -hmm. You can head over to ESL.gg slash Legendary Week 4. We are doing a giveaway for some free packs. So make sure you go to that website. Uh, follow the instructions on screen, and uh, you'll be entered in a raffle uh, to win some packs. Improve your collection. I would love to win some packs. You're not allowed to win packs. 
I don't know why I'm here then. I've actually, <laughs> you're getting paid in packs. I've been paid in packs since the inception of the Legendary Series. Wow, that's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's my dream to get a one pack. It's my every, dream. Every day I walk. Actually, I have a one pack right now, but it's my dream <laughs> to get a one pack of Hearthstone. I have a keg. Oh, that's like a super pack. It's yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like people a G just donate money a, to you. It's a GVG pack. Wow, mm -hmm. that's it's a whole hardcore. It's a whole adventure mode. Uh, well, we can actually take a look at the groups of the players that we're going to be able not? to see today. Why not? Let's take a look right now. We have coming up first, uh, Modern Leper up against Luigi Z Z Z Z Z, mm -hmm. and of course we got Cross. It's actually uh, Cross Seven Two Two Four, a Japanese player. Very interesting. Up against Amaz, of course, the fan favorite. I would say overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course Group B, we are going to see Bunny Muffins. Of course, Modern Leper and Bunny Muffins. Their names were too long, so. Uh, we had to shorten them a little bit. But Bunny Muffins and uh, Too Wet, who this is actually his second Legendary Series that he's qualified for. He qualified last week as well and lost to the eventual, win eventual winner, Kabi. And then, of course, Domdis and our other invited player, Raynad. So we have the owner and player for Team Archon and the owner and player for Team Tempo Storm. This is going to be a really exciting day. I think so. I mean, whenever you get those big personalities, it's always really cool also to see all of the other players match up against such mm -hmm. big names because everybody going into it, I mean, they expect a certain level of caliber from Amaz, from Marinette. Yeah. And you got to see, like, you know, these, these lesser names, the people that you don't know nearly as much. I mean, there's a lot of talented players out there. Are they capable of stepping up to the plate and being able to, you know, consistently get those Ws? Yeah, for sure. So we are uh, moments away from being able to jump into our first match. Of course, it is going to be Modern Leper versus Luigi's. Now, I want to give a brief introduction about both these players really quickly. Both these players made it through the open bracket, so they uh, competed in the Challenger Cup over the past weekend. Modern Leper, uh, he's a young player from uh, the UK. Uh, he plays for Razor's Edge Gaming. Now, Razor's Edge Gaming is uh, an interesting organization. It's actually a Greek organization. And he's the only non-Greek player that's a part of Razor's Edge Gaming. I asked him, uh, like, does he practice with everybody? He says he does practice with uh, a couple of the players, but he, uh, his main practice group is with uh, some other pros like Zixo, RDU, uh, Impact. And all those players have been seeing a lot of success lately. Uh, so I'm really looking for big things from him. Uh, Luigi's, on the other hand, he actually... Before he competed in the Challenger Cup last week, he had a six-month break from Hearthstone. Wow. The last time he competed in a tournament was before GVG. Things changed, I think. It, it, they a did. A little bit. Just a little bit a little they've bit. changed. Uh, but there's a lot of players that actually know about Luigi's. They say, oh, well, back in the day, he was a really popular player. I mean, uh, he was known at once upon a time as like one of the Open Kings, the king of the Open tournaments. Uh, back in the national ESL days, he had uh, seven NESL top three finishes, three top three finishes in Zotac Cups, and uh, a first place finish in one of the Mana Grind Cups. And that was all um, before Hearthstone sort of blew up. So uh, this guy has been around the block a few times. You know, I always think that once you are able to ascend to that top level, um, it, it's not always 100%, but chances are you're able to ascend to that top level yet again. It doesn't yeah. matter if you take that break. You have the mindset for it. You have the ability to just learn the game fast enough to be able to get to that very, very high echelon of play. So mm -hmm. uh, obviously I expect good things from him, and we'll find out very, very quickly as we do head off into our first match of the day or our first game of the day. It is, of course, um, Warrior versus... I'm sorry, uh, Warrior versus Hunter. Yeah. Um, I believe um, Modern Leper is the Warrior player. Um, the, the Just getting confirmation the, from the, that, yeah, yeah, the glow is actually uh, switched. But uh, I'd assume Modern Leper is the Warrior player because when I was talking to Modern Leper earlier in the week, he actually told me that he thinks Grim Patron Warrior, the deck that he's running, is the strongest deck currently in competitive play. He said... Players will be stupid not to bring Page and Warrior. I've played against it a lot of times, and it is very, very powerful. It's just crazy how how much damage that you can do off of one turn. We've kind of, mm -hmm. I, I feel like the meta has kind of gone away from that for a while, and yeah. it's just been just consistent stuff. You push out big guys, yeah. and uh, that's how you play control. But we're seeing like this mid-range, really heavy power. You have early game to stay alive mm -hmm. a lot of the times, and you're able to just. Um, you know, have good timings against your opponents. Not yeah. bring it to the Super League game, but also, you know, be able to push out damage. Yeah. Now, this matchup, uh, of course, Luigi's, I believe, if I'm correct, and he's the Hunter player. Um, Luigi's, 
uh, he's bringing the mid range hunter here, mm -hmm. and uh, mid range hunter is pretty strong. It's it's uh, unlike face hunter, it's not super aggressive. A lot of times you play more of a board control role, sort of early on in the game. Uh, you really want to get to those power turns. Turn five, turn six is when you can play like uh, Savannah High Mains, which yep. is what sort of the deck is built around. Being able to control the early game, get big sticky creatures on the board, and then be able to do large amounts of burst damage with uh, like a big board kill commands uh, from hand all in one turn and. Uh, as far as this matchup goes, it really all depends. If the hunter can put out a lot of pressure early, which is sort of weird for a mid-range hunter, but if they uh -huh. can do that, it doesn't uh, allow the warrior the opportunity to get to those points. Like you said, the mid-game, uh, around turn 8, where they could start getting the Warsong Commander out, uh, charging big Frothing Berserkers up, or getting sure. multiple Grim Pagans out. Um, if the mid-range hunter can get to a point where they're putting out a lot of pressure early on, forcing the warrior to play super defensively, uh, then a lot of times mid-range hunter can come out on top of this match. But you know, I think this King Mukla play is actually a big tell for for the warrior because, like, you don't know exactly where the uh, the, the hunter is. It could be face hunter still. Yeah. Like the the ranges are merged, right? You're gonna play that. Um, you, you're gonna play the same thing in face hunter that you would in mid-range hunter. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he he threw out the Mukla right now. It really tells him exactly what his deck is, and yeah. I feel like Warrior is able to play his hands a lot more effectively. And in general, I think he has the advantage going into this mid-game stage, just because he's not just throwing stuff out to try to get, you know, just uh, a little bit of board control. Well, of course you're going to get board control no matter what against uh, Hunter, but you could just play it a lot more accurately, I think. Did the Muckle come from his deck, or did it come from a web spinner? Oh, you're right. It came from a web well, spinner. Well, the, the Oasis snap draw as well. I'm not sure if he played two web spinners already. But both those cards are a little bit weird to find in here. But um, I, this could actually be kind of bad, uh, playing the Mukla. Um, it's not looking too good right because now, Because the man. bananas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that's a 9-5. Nine nine that's brutal right now. And Grim Patrons are balanced by their stat cost. I mean, it's a 3-3, three, three, so it's hard mm -hmm. for it to survive damage. But if you get to a turn where you can play a Grim Patron or charge up a Grim Patron and it have be a 4-4 four four from a banana instead, oh yeah, that opens up so many more possibilities. I mean, trades get so much more efficient, obviously. Yeah. If you have uh, the Charger out there, uh, just things get out of control so, so fast because with the, the Warrior, excuse me, with the, um, the Hunter in general, I feel like you need to have that momentum. You know, you cannot lose that momentum else you end up just crashing, yeah. crashing and burning. We are back to us. Uh, we had a, a slight issue, of course, as you could see with uh, with the overlay there, trying to get the players matched up with their uh, their turn screen. So we're gonna look at our ugly mugs for a second here. I don't think your mug is ugly. Yeah, we could talk. Uh, we could talk about King Mukla, I guess, for a second. And bananas. And bananas. Uh, yeah, as you said, I think King Mukla. One, it did probably come from the web spinner. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take that back. Yeah. But. Um, uh, yeah, in general, I feel like giving that to a warrior, I mean, in general, it's just powering them up. Uh, it is unfortunate how it just, like, completely evaporated very, very quickly yeah. with the, with the um, execute. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to get a huge minion off the board very quickly. It looks like we got things figured out. Everything's good to go. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing a really, really spiraled out of control situation, I think, where warriors are just getting... Pretty nicely ahead, but I mean, there still are chances. Yeah, uh, I've seen a ton of times where it's like, oh, they're gonna die, but they come back very easily. Yeah. Now the one thing here, uh, the main thing about Grim Page and Warrior is you need to draw cards. Mm -hmm. uh, the the biggest uh, weakness of the deck is not draw have enough draw in your hand early on, because the early game is basically all about stalling until you can get to the point where you can start making big combos, whether it be with Grim Patron. Whether it be with Frothing Berserker. If you get to the point where you're having to play really reactive and defensively, and you're using your cards in a defensive manner, then uh -huh. eventually you'll get to the point where you just run out of stuff. And that's sort of where he is right now. He has two big threats in his hand. But mid range hunters uh, have really great ways to deal with big threats. They have cards like Kill Command. Uh, they have a lot of ways to turn small creatures into bigger threats, uh, especially with Houndmaster. Sure. And uh, um, like I said, the Kill Command, if you have a, a beast available on the board. And as soon as a mid range hunter gains board control, and puts out a big threat that doesn't have an answer, like say a Savannah High Main, the game's all but lost because they have the tools to be able to deal with the board and tools to be able to just put ridiculous amount, ridiculous amounts of pressure onto your your health um, once they get those big creatures down. 
So he has to just boom here off of relegation. Now, is this boom kind of a tell, or are you going to throw this seven drop down every single time? Like, what what are the ways that Warrior can deal with the Savannah High main in an effective manner right now? I, I feel like it's tough. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way to for him to just activate something on the board and be able to deal with the High main. So I no. feel like uh, the boom was just out of necessity at this point. Yeah, can't really do anything from that position. And right now, as you said, uh, Hunter will get. Uh, a good amount of tempo right now. Mm -hmm. Savannah Hymish is such a good card against Warrior in general. Even Control Warriors. It's one of the reasons why uh, normally Hunters are considered weak against Warriors. But mm -hmm. Midrange Hunter has quite a considerably stronger matchup. Just because of cards like Savannah Hymin, which are so hard for warriors, warriors to be able to remove. Especially from an empty board. What they have to do is like cool Taskmaster it and then BGH. And then follow that up with like a Baron Gannon. But a lot of times it takes multiple cards yeah. across multiple turns. And by that time, the Hunter has put out so much pressure that it doesn't even matter. And Grip Patient Warrior is even harder. They can make plays with, like, if they have something on the board and can deal with the, the first part of the high main right away, then that following turn, they can use those 2-2 two, two Hyenas to proc Grim Patrons. Mm -hmm. But it's really awkward and a lot of times really hard. Do we ever consider uh, throwing a Grimash earlier just because we know that, like, board control is going to be yes. a lot better? Uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, our win condition is actually going to be our patrons more so than our, you know, just direct damage. I mean, he does have, like, a 9-drop, 10 damage, right? Yeah. Like, he can throw down the Gromash, the Whirlwind, uh, even... He could do an extra point of damage with the bananas. Yeah. So he always has that. Uh, but I don't know if like he wants to just survive until then. He does have quite a bit of uh, of health left still. So yeah. wow, he's going to actually drop both of them. Just get complete board control with um, with the patron. Yeah. Uh, four up. Yeah, this is really good sequencing, actually, because he made sure that he gave his boom bots the best chance possible mm -hmm. to hit. Because uh, he got all the damage from his boom bots instead of just whirlwinding them down without throwing them in. Um, and then, of course, you got the activation and these Grim Pages. But that's a good point about the Gromish. Uh, the difference between Control Warrior, the Gromish and Control Warrior, and Patron Warrior is huge. Because you said, a lot of times, Grim Patron Warrior, what they want to do is just have board control as long as possible until they can get to combos. A lot of times, the Gromish is used as just something to get immediate control over the board or yeah. do immediate damage onto the board instead of in Control Warrior, where it's a lot of times used as a finisher. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a different mindset when you're going into it. Now this is super awkward because Grim Patrons are so hard to remove once they're on the board. Yeah. And this is, as you said, just an awkward situation where, uh, I mean, no matter what he throws down, it can just spiral out of control. If there was a charger here, I mean, literally he's just... His whole hand is wiped out very, very quickly. Yeah. It's going to be a slam, which is fine. That is lethal um, but on yeah. board. Yeah. All right. So, of course, Modern Leper going to take game one. And it looks like his theory is true that Grim Patron Warrior is going to be the deck to beat uh, currently in competitive play until someone finds a reasonable counter or reasonable counters to it. Uh, it, it continues its reign. Not only that, I think uh, another big advantage is now we know exactly where the Hunter is going to be. So any time mm -hmm. we actually match up against the Hunter yet again, we know it's going to be mid-range. We know exactly how to play it. Yeah. I, I think that whole surprise factor of you know uh, changing up your macro decks uh, is going to be a big effect on how to actually win these conquests best of fives. Yeah. Um, just because you get to play a lot more accurately. A, a lot of times it comes down to, you know, just having the right starting hand and then being able to snowball it. Because we do see RNG, like, you win 60% of the time against certain decks. Mm -hmm. And uh, that 40%, you have to make sure that you're starting off at 60%. Because, you know, you start off at 55%. It makes a big difference. That extra 5%, it is EV that true. you're giving up. Very true. Very true. So looking at these guys' lists... Um, Modern Leper still has uh, Shaman and mm -hmm. Warlock left to bring. Now, it, it looks like uh, Modern Leper um, might be one of the only players to bring Shaman in the whole tournament. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that, because I feel like, um, in general, I've read stuff. I, I know that Shaman is considered bad. Yep. Uh, I know recently on Ghost of Gamers, they released something that Shaman is really, really good high win rate, but that's in a specific format when you yeah. can prepare for your opponents. Mm -hmm. In this type of format with Conquest, I mean, uh, when they don't have a lot of time to prepare for each other, is it the wise thing to do? Is it right? Is it correct? Well, uh, after talking to Modern Leper earlier in the week, he was telling me that he thinks Mech Shaman is really, really underrated. And if we even go back, I mean, it's, it's hard to find good sample sizes, but um, if you go back to Gfinity in London, which happened a couple weeks ago, uh, there was a lot of players that brought Mech Shaman. Is that just because of the Power Mace? 
Yeah, Power Mason, just sometimes they can have just such huge snowball -y starts with the Whirling zap uh -huh. If you can hide a Whirling zap behind like an Anoyachan, or oh. get a Fell Weaver out on the board and your opponent doesn't have a way to deal with it, you can just win the game. Um, because a card like Fell Reaver, you get it out so early, if your opponent doesn't have a way to deal with it, even if they're burning cards from your deck, it doesn't matter, because the deck is aggressive, you're not going to get through your 30 cards anyway, so if you're hitting for 8 every turn, the game's going to be over in a couple turns no matter what. Mm -hmm. So it's it's things like that, where sometimes you can make an early play with Fell Reaver or Whirling Zapomatic that straight up wins the game, and a lot of players just don't really ex expect that. Uh, we can even go back to um, ESL ran the Play It Cool tournament, which was like the free-to-play marathon where Savitz, in the last couple hours of the tournament, crafted a mech shaman from, like, nothing yep. and ranked up on the ladder with huge win streaks. And nobody really knew how to play against it. Nobody really was expecting it. And that's one of the strengths. It's just that outside of the meta, not a lot of people understand. Or even if they do understand, they still there's still a huge range yeah. for stuff to be in there that they don't expect. Yeah, they're not building for it. Gotcha. Uh, everybody's here, and they're like, oh, i got to find things to counter page more. You can even tell... Luigi's in a mid-range hunter brought Harrison Jones. Yeah. So he was really countering Grim Patron Warrior or Warriors in general and other um, um, other hunters. Now Harrison Jones is okay against Mech Shaman because a lot of times they use Doomhammer to burst or uh, Power Mace, like you like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, if on turn five, if the Shaman has board control and you're just using it to Harrison Jones, sometimes that isn't even enough. Talk to me about this matchup, though. Mid-range Hunter against this Shaman, well, this Mech Shaman, mm -hmm. as we can see. Um, how, how does it match up ordinarily? I really... There's players that are on the fence about this because it's a matchup that you don't see. Uh -huh. Mid-range Hunter uh, sort of has just come back. Uh, there's players like uh, like Era, ERA, um, who got to number one legend last season with it. Uh, but as far as being seen in competitive play, it's just now starting to come back and uh, oh, dominate face hunter as far as like the hunter deck goes that players bring. And Mech Shaman is like never seen. So Mech Shaman actually does have a lot of ways early on to deal with some of these small annoying threats. They have Earthshock, which deals with like mad scientists and haunted creepers and leopard gnomes really easily. Um, and then they have ways to put on pressure at the same time. So they can root and pressure in the same turn, which is a luxury that a lot of classes don't have against Hunter. Oh, nice little start we have already. Of course, we have the Power Mace, we have the the Whirling Zapomatic. Yes! Everything's looking great for, for Shaman at this point. Yeah. And it's going to go ahead and coin out an Anoyatron. That yeah. is annoying. I like this play, by the way. As you were just talking about, you get an Anoyatron up, you get the Zapomatic up, you get the Power Mace going. Yeah. You're good to go, man. Indeed. There was a tournament that happened a couple weeks ago at DreamHack. Um, where uh, I believe it was Firebat was playing against uh, Stannis Baratheon. Yes, there you go. Stannis Baratheon. That's exactly you, who it was. Um, and he actually won on turn four against the Handlock with Whirling Zapomatic <laughs> Double Rockbiter. Wow. Yeah. That's like, brutal, it's man. things like that that just yeah, you, yeah, sometimes yeah. you just win games. If they don't have an answer, you don't get a Dark Bomb early on against, uh, as a Handlock player against a Whirling Zapomatic and your opponent has Double Rockbiter, you lose. Yeah. That's it. Wow, that's a, by the way, a brutal turn right there, there to get the two four plus one. Uh, I mean, it puts Shaman in a very interesting spot because what is the, you know, what's the best play here? Obviously, a lot of times they're putting down the power mace because they can drop on turn four the piloted shredder. It helps them out. Uh, but even like, what are you attacking? Are you going face? Are you trying to kill the two four? It's just a very unclear situation. Yeah, I mean, he has to Urshock here just because he has to... Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Rolls wow. the Stone Claw totem. Wow. Wow. That's how you win. That, I mean, look at that. That's six damage I right know. there. That's beautiful. And, uh, I mean, he doesn't have an immediate way to deal with this. He might even be tempted to just kill Command this Rolling Zapomatic to stop himself from taking damage. Like, it feels really great to play Powder Shredder on Curve, but he knows that if he plays it, he's going to take... Six damage falling turn. But oh, I mean, man. Uh, this establishes a strong board. Mm -hmm. But if somehow Modern Leper could find a way to deal with this. <laughs> wow. I mean. Wow. So, what is the correct play here? He could pilot a Shredder, obviously. He could Power Mace and Rock Biter. But, you know, again, what is going to be your, tar your target? You could Power Mace the pilot a Shredder. Uh, yeah. Throw your Rock Biter. Try to put damage out in the field. I feel like that's very bold because. You know, you do have some taunters up and big taunters up for um, for Hunter as the game progresses. So you might not always be able to 
to put consistent damage on face. Of course, you just use one of your silences. So it's kind of an unclear situation, I feel, to, well, to just move on this turn four. Slightly awkward. Um, I'd well, be inclined to say he should just play the Pilot Shredder as well. Um, but then he, he has to think whether or not he trades, um, like hits face once and then trades with the uh -huh. first iteration of the Pilot Shredder. Or just go all damage to face. And, uh, I mean, he might feel Let's like he has the, it looks like he, yeah, huh, all face. face. He does have Doomhammer Rockbiter, uh, mm -hmm. which is a way for him to put out a lot of sort of unexpected burst, I suppose, yeah. is, is a way to put it. I mean, it's 10 damage. I mean, all he needs yeah. is 8 more, and he's good to go. So I mean, it is. it would be possible for him to race in a scenario like that. Because right now he's forcing the uh, Luigi's on the mid-range hunter to play sort of defensively, which is, I mean, I talked about earlier, it's sort of what mid-range hunters do. Yeah. They play defensively until they get big, sticky creatures out like Savannah High Main. They take control of the board. They never get rid of it. They're swinging for six a turn, plus two from the hero power. Mm -hmm. Game's going to be over. Hey, I was telling you before, you just make it a 15 turns. So that's 30 damage. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> hunters win in 15 turns no matter what. Wow. Wow. That's the new meta, right? Yeah. All right, so he does do a kill command, takes huh. out. Uh, kind of unfortunate for the new, Ru new Rubian Egg. He really doesn't have capacity to do anything of, of value for this mm. turn. And this is super awkward if I am the Druid. Uh, sorry, the, the, the shaman. shaman. I know. it's it's. I don't see Shamans very often either, so I'm like, yeah. it's got to be a Druid. has to be a Druid. I must be seeing things. Ooh, this is actually super risky because he's hoping... He's setting up for a next turn lethal. Yes. Because he actually has lethal damage. Crackle, Rockbiter. There's a low theb in the hand of Luigi's. Yeah. And so. Oh, and a Houndmaster. Wow. The yeah. world is his oyster, man. Yeah. But of course, I think low theb has to come out. Yeah. If he went face with both attacks of the Doomhammer there, you yeah. have to know that you, he's setting up for a lethal. You're, you're absolutely telling what your opponent is capable of doing at that point, mm -hmm. right? Like, if he's not trying to go for a board, he has to be winning in the very, very next turn. So, yeah. turn seven, the the max, I would say. Turn eight, maybe. He's going to go for the Houndmaster. What do you think about this play rather than going for the Lothab? Both effectively do the same thing, just because um, he, 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 high main's out of the question there. Mm -hmm. Houndmaster here allows him to put out more immediate damage. Yeah. So he's setting up himself up for a next turn lethal. Uh -huh. um, and this way... If he's going face with the Doomhammer like that, he's most likely setting up for some type of lethal with the Doomhammer. So this takes away the Doomhammer as an effective option to go for that. And okay. now there's, I don't think there's any way out of this. for. See, I thought it would be better to Lotheb because there's more direct damage with spells rather than mm -hmm. you know actually having some board presence, yeah. having like chargers out or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and Ooh. there is the capacity for it to be a silence. You throw up double rock biters and you're able to, to win that way. But, but of course... How it worked out, <laughs> victory, and it ties up one and one apiece. Yeah, it was pretty much over, but it was kind of funny that at the end he rolled a cra uh, three damage I crackle know. on the on the haunted beans, keeper. Bro. But uh, it was just looking good for him that from that point. And I mean, that's just one of the scary things about Midrange Hunter. If they have a board, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to remove a board. A hound mastered haunted creeper. Like, what do you even do yeah. with a pilot shredder on the board? If they get a Savannah High main down. Even if you manage to clear everything off the board, there's still going to be whatever comes out with Pilot Shader. And then two, two, two twos and two oh, one yeah. ones. That's right. That's uh, right. Two, two, two. If, if the Savannah High main came down. But, I mean, let's say he didn't have Lothab or Houndmaster. Game would have been over the next turn. Yeah. So that's uh, that's the potential that that Shaman has. Yeah, and it was really, really, really quick for, mm -hmm. um, for, for just so much damage to be put down. Yeah. But that being said, I mean, we are tied one one piece. Of course, Druid is kind of... Uh, I keep saying Druid now. <laughs> um, gosh. The Shaman. I know. The Shaman is mm -hmm. kind of revealed right now. Very interesting to see what comes up of this next turn because uh, we haven't seen anything else but the the uh, the Hunter coming out from Luigi's. Yeah. He does have Druid and Warlock left. Now, uh, Luigi's back in the day, mm -hmm. uh, before he took his long break, was known to be a, a Zoo player. Uh, he actually told me that he was playing Zoo before everybody else was even playing he Zoo. He was the first Zoo. Yeah, he, he was saying that he played Zoo even before Raynad sort of wow. so he's created the, the deck. actual OG. Before the, hey guys, Raynad here with another deck tech. <laughs> like, he, the, Luigi's was before that. Wow. Um, so we're, we have the two fathers, uh, separate fathers, not like the like two fathers with, like, Sharing a child. No, go on with that. Please <laughs> keep explaining. <laughs> like Luigi's <laughs> fathered a zoo deck, and then later Rain had fathered a zoo deck and tried to claim that his was the first. Oh. He probably didn't know about Luigi's. Ooh. But 
Um, he said it was in beta. It was the false error, you're saying? Yeah, long before. Yeah, long before Rain did his. So we'll have to see. Uh, but I, after going off on that tangent, basically what I was trying to say is probably Zoo from Luigi's. All right. And what are we going to probably see from Modern Leopard? I think it's Handlock. I love Handlock, man. It's I, my absolute favorite. I recently just got my Golden Warlock. And, oh, uh, Muscle I'd, Tough. I'd say, <laughs> thank you. I'd say 350 of those games were uh, Handlock. Probably about 125 were uh, Zoo. And then 25 of them were just God knows what. <laughs> Some <laughs> demon hybrid. Who, who even knows? Uh, but actually, it looks like it is going to be handlock versus handlock. So uh, one of the things that is really strong about Conquest, since you know the, your opponent's class, but you don't know your opponent's uh, deck list, um, in the whole situation with, hey, I'm trying to mind games my opponent into mm -hmm. picking a certain deck. If you go against the grain and pick something that you're, you're, you think your opponent is not going to expect, like Luigi's, known as a zoo player, picks handlock. You can sometimes have an advantage. It, it as I was talking about before, the opening hand, I mean, if you keep this Ancient Watcher, it's a big mistake, right? Yeah. You do not want to be keeping uh, an Ancient Watcher mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, and it looks Ooh. like, no, he's not. He's he, taking the Molten Giant. I like yeah, that. Yeah, now, if you sort of have to mulligan for mm -hmm. Zoo in this matchup. Um, just because if you mulligan for Handlock and then it ends up being Zoo, sometimes yeah, you come into Yeah, you're just dead. Yeah. Well, you can be just dead. Now, Handlock is considered sort of a natural predator uh, to Zoo Warlock just because they have a lot of AoE clear. They have Shadow Flames. You get them low, they put up a big wall. Really hard to get through it. Um, so you have a little bit more wiggle room as opposed to, say, like if you're playing a Control Warrior and you mulligan for Handlock, something of that, that effect. Yep. Um, but, I mean, both players at this point are not going to realize that it's Handlock versus Handlock. And oh, when you draw through a third of your deck, we tap. <laughs> just, just keep mashing that yeah. button. Yeah. It's my favorite pastime, man. All right. So what are we going to see here? Most likely just um, an end turn. Pass. Yeah. Pass. Or he can tap and then throw out the coin. You're basically trading the coin for a card. I don't like to do that, though. Yeah. I, I, I don't like it. I've seen people do it. I just like, especially when with Thorazine, mm -hmm. um, if you get like a, a turn five, you coin out Thor's and you have boom in your hand. Yeah. It's just like so much tempo that you're going to gain here. Yeah. And if you know your opponents are slow, they're not like pushing stuff out in the field, which I mean, obviously they are normally. Um, you know, you could just get a lot of, of damage done. It's yeah. just so beautiful. It, it feels so good. A lot of times it just depends how happy you are with your hand. Yeah. If you're like, oh, my hand's great, just pass. Save mm -hmm. the coin for a strong later turn. Um, but it seems like he wasn't happy. Now, okay, so Handlock vs. Handlock has not been around. Uh, well, it's, it's, it went away for a while. Handlock vs. Handlock was really popular right before GVG and right after GVG came out. <laughs> but it's gone away for a while, and now it's, that it's come back, we, we start to see like the intricacies. If you have the opportunity to play Twilight Drake and Mountain Giant on, the, on your turn four, which one do you go with? I ordinarily like to throw down. I, I know it's kind of weird, but let's I hear like, it. I like to throw down the Twilight Drake okay, for this exact reason. Um, you know, a BGH just reverses tempo so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know, now he has a BGH, and he will have another Mountain Giant out. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. Obviously, there are counters because, of course, we see a BGH in Modern Lepers, and we also saw that he has two BGHs from the starting uh, from the starting Mulligan. So it's a really nice situation. Look at this. I mean. It looks kind of pretty, but it's going to be thwarted very, very easily with simple BGH. What yeah. is his? He has three mana left over. Mm -hmm. Got to mash that tap, bro. Yep. Got to mash that Gotta tap. Got to get my fix. Exactly. Yeah, the, the intricacies of it. So, Mountain Giant only has one counter. It's BGH. Uh -huh. Twilight Drake, you need a two-card combo to deal with it. You need Owl and Mortal Coil. Yeah. It also depends if you're on the coin. If you can bring out a 410 Twilight Drake, it's yeah. infinitely better than a 49 or a 48. Because the all of a sudden, trains. Mountain Giant plus Mortal, Mortal Coil doesn't kill it, or just Mountain Giant by itself. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that go into it. The big thing here is is getting initiative on board. The player with initiative, a lot of times, is the one that comes out on top. So um, if you play a Mountain Giant, and they BGH it, and then play a threat, and you don't have a threat, all of a sudden, you're behind. That's right. Uh, so... Of course, I, I didn't actually analyze super, super much on exactly what his hand is. It's kind of an awkward spot for Luigi's right now because he doesn't have any big stuff to put down on the board. I mean, just throwing out a, a Sludge Belcher does feel kind of awkward at this point. And he is, in fact, just going to clear everything. 
and pass it over to his turn. But he doesn't have, like, a clear answer on what he does on this turn 7, I feel like. Whereas, of course, we have... Oh, I'm sorry. This Did is Luigi's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Modern Leopard, then I should say. But Luigi's, I mean, he clearly has a way to play this out. Throwing out Boom on a pretty empty board, I would say. You know, Ancient Watcher is doing pretty negligible stuff. Yeah. And, uh, like, again, what does he do at this point? I'm <sighs> not sure. It's so difficult. He can Shadow Flame and use Dark Bomb. Yeah. But that's uh, a two-card combination, it's or three-card three card combination, to take out one card. And not only that, you're still taking damage from it. You're not just trading for it. I mean, well, it is getting you closer to Molten yeah. Giants. You want the damage, bro. Yeah. You want the damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. Get it in here. Yeah. I mean, he will be able to next turn, well... He'll be able to play one. Yeah. Actually, if he... No, no. Yeah, he'll if be he, able to play one. Yeah. If he takes some damage, he might be able to tap and play two. But uh, in this in this matchup, sometimes you, you don't want to play two. Um, you want to play two if you're in danger. But a lot of times, you don't want to overextend because handlocks have so much huge AOE that your opponent... If you place two hand, uh, Mount Molten Giants and your opponent plays one Molten Giant and Shadow Flames... Well, he did give up a Shadow Flame already, though. Oh, that's true. And a lot so of times, handlocks nowadays... Only, only one. one. Yeah. Yeah, mm. so I feel like throwing down two is... Is not the best, but it's not the worst, you know? Yeah. Like, there could be that rare occurrence. Of course, well, even two BGHs. I mean, both of them already used one. So, a tough spot right now. Yeah. Tough spot right now. I'm not sure exactly what he does, but he might just belch. Yeah, he See, it's he like... Can bell <sighs> he can... If he's going to... I think he needs some Mortal Coil here first, regardless. Yeah. Uh, just because it's the cheaper way to draw a card here. You know you're going to use it anyway. So you might as well. So what do you do here? Would you consider like... I think you tap mold? and just play Sludge Belcher, to be honest. Okay. Um, I don't know if Molten Giant is the right play here, just because your Molten Giant is so vulnerable and you need to put out... Um, or you need to start um, stopping the bleeding here. Yeah. Because you put out a Molten Giant without a taunt and your opponent has 8 damage on board, you're sitting at 14. All of a sudden, double Hellfire kills you. Yeah. And look what Luigi's has. Double yeah, Hellfire. Double Hellfire, baby. I mean, he could still do it. It's uh, or next turn. Even when those molten giants come out, remember next turn uh, there will be the ki oh one mana off lethal. Yeah, so unfortunate. So unfortunate. Does he go for it though? Mm. No. You never want to put a hand lock at one. <laughs> because them being at one yeah. is like effectively them being at like ten. Uh, because then they can play double molten giant anti kill bot yeah. and still have four mana left over to do whatever they want to taunt. That's not the Emote. worst of draws. Yeah. It's a threat. But again, it's the question of do I want to extend? Yeah. And I think he can. I think he I has think the luxury so of being able to extend here. You can push it. All right. We got free Molten Giants now. So there's a lot that he can do. Now, is that something like... I just threw down a Molten Giant. Okay. I put you down to 10 hit points. It's kind of saying, like, please throw down your Molten Giants. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of scary if I am um, if I am Modern Leper at this point, even though, like, he's kind of relegated to do so. Yeah. Um, I feel like the play is going to be double Molten Giants, taunt them up, and then throw down Lotheb to kind of defend against that. Uh, I think, actually, that might be his best option. Yeah. He can play double Molten Giant, Lotheb, and then taunt up. Um, I mean, he could also play double Molten Giant, anti Cubot. Yeah. Okay. But it sort of serve, it's not serve the same purpose, but I, I like the Lotha play better just because, let's say you play anti heal bot, mm -hmm. all of a sudden he has a silence and a siphon soul, and you're you're looking at, you're dead still. Yeah. That would be 18 well, damage on board just with that. The way I see it is, if you lose the Molten Giants, you're most likely to lose in the game, because that's the biggest tempo swing that you can get. Yep. So we have to defend our Molten Giants as best as possible and get the maximum value out of it. So we need to be able to defend it with the Lotheb. Of course, we're staying safe against things like um, things like Shadow Flame. Yep. But it's not a surefire type of defense, that's for sure. There he goes, taunt him up, get the Lotheb out. Man, definitely an interesting spot here. Jaraxxus. Will he face Jaraxxus? Not yet, at least. Not yet. Definitely not yet. So it does put... Uh, Luigi's in a really, really difficult spot yet again, and I love this. I mean, they're always putting each other in these really, really tough spots. I don't know what the clear answer is here either. Um, okay. Tap? Tap, see what happens? No, that can't be it. 
Because uh, what are you really <laughs> looking for in a town? He does have a way to board clear here, but he's also clearing his own board yeah. in the process. Yeah. Um, and if he does that, then he's not playing anything because he'd have to use Hellfire in order to do this. Yep. Uh, it might be the play just because, I mean, he's sitting on seven cards. His opponent's sitting on four cards. Yeah. No, I definitely think it is the play. Um, okay. A, as we were talking about, you know, the Molten Giants are a lot of the momentum. Yeah. And now he's threatening lethal right now. He found a way to sequence it where getting his Twilight Drake uh, by not trading into the Giant. Yeah. And uh, it, it just the the best possible way he could do that and still apply pressure. Agree. So at this point, he knows, like, okay, why didn't you trade out the 5-2 for the 4-7? Um make it a 4-3. So at this point, he needs to put down his anti-kill bot. Now he's asking himself, what do I do with my remaining five? Yeah. Tap, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Well, you I know, mean, he can. He can, right? There's there's not really that many like direct threats that deal nine damage at that point. Mm -hmm. So he could potentially tap and just go with it and see what happens. Um, and then what do you do with your remaining three? I'm not sure. E he's tapping. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it feels so good. Yeah, and feels he feels so good. <laughs> yep, makes sense. That uh, that kind of hurts though to have to trade into it like that. It does. All right, and I mean, obviously, the world right now for Luigi's, um, he's he's, you know, he doesn't have lethal just yet, but I mean, he has probably a, a seventy percent advantage right now in yeah. terms of win rates. 72.374-32884. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, exactly. I mean, if you're at this point, do you just like Hellfire, Molten Giant, taunt it up, or get your taunt out there and you're good yeah. to go? Yeah, I mean, you could even hell, you could Hellfire, Molten Giant, Sludge Belcher. Yeah, that's fine too. Completely yeah. mana efficient. Indeed. Mm. And uh, Delicious. If, if you're Modern Leper right now, how do you deal with this? Well, you oh, BGH. Game Hunter. That's right. Big Game Hunter. So the double BGH is making a comeback. Handlock is one of the decks that can uh, fit it in the most. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of cards that are cuttable. Um, they can sub out the second Owl. Um, they can sub out like either one of the Hellf Hellfires or one of the Shadow Flames. Or uh, even, one of their big threats. Uh, it looks like I haven't seen any of the... Um the one, two, threes, kill your opponent for five. The zombie chows? Zombie chows. I mm -hmm. haven't seen them. Yeah, because so aggro is the pure aggro is not quite as popular. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, hand locks can, like, severage. And uh, a lot of times, they can, they're can they they're not facing up against, like, face hunters or mech mages, things like that where you need that. It's, like, other hand locks, patron warriors, uh, some zoo locks, but you don't really need zombie chow against, against zoo locks if you're a hand lock player. So you yeah. can afford to put in double BGH. I've even seen Control Warriors now put in double BGH. Control Warriors can actually uh, fit in double BGH more as well because they have cards like Cool Taskmaster uh -huh. where all of a sudden they can turn an enemy five health or five attack creature into a BGH target. Yeah. So they can make use of BGH even outside of normal circumstances where you would make use of a BGH. Back Way back when I used to do that with Abusive Sergeants. Yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah. Uh, um, oh man, Silent Storm who won the Season 1 Legendary Series Finals uh, used uh, Abusive Sergeant in his Demon Lock deck, and a lot of times he would do combos where he'd Abusive Sergeant like a Lothep yep. and BGH it, which was really cool, really creative. It's efficient, man. Can be efficient. Okay, we can put our opponent down to two health. This is like... Do we tap... Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know what we do here, man. It's like a very, very tough spot. Can I you mean, draw into... Okay, that that is actually pretty good. We can Owl now. Defender of Argus, get rid of the 3-5. We have two Taunters up on the field. Um, I think that like that's the best thing that we could have possibly hoped for. We don't really have that many more uh, ways or win conditions, I would say, for Modern Leper. We're just looking for good draws, hoping for the best, because there's just so many ways that we can die at this point. Um, Modern Leper doing his Blue Steel impression. Hmm. It's been like that. I mean, he's posing, too. yeah. He's committed. Hmm. He hasn't stopped. Yeah, I'm curious what's on the the window of Luigi's wall there. The purple, pink hearts. Can't quite tell. It's from his SO, bro. Oh, is it? Most likely. There we go. Taunt him, taunt him up. Oh, he's just going to uh, trade out. Yeah. That's fine, too. <laughs> See, now this is uh, one of the cool things about Handlock is you never know really who has a big advantage in the matchup. 
until you get down to the nitty gritty, until you get down to the end. Okay. Both players, there's a lot of fan lines that don't run burst. I've seen some players who are starting to run the faceless um, manipulator, arcane gall, and power overwhelming combination. I hate that. Yeah, or even with Emperor Thorstein now, you can fit in yeah. Leroy Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, but most players don't run those types of things. So the most burst that they can do is like double Hellfire Dark Bomb, which is a whopping nine. Well, so a lot well. of the times these players can can tap pretty aggressively or <laughs> defensively in some cases, and get to the point where they uh, can come back in a game that is almost lost. Uh, that's sort of what Hanlock is is made to do. They they can survive a four health. Sure, four health is plenty of health. That's all I need. <laughs> Again, it's uh, very unclear what to do at this point. I think we have to tap again because we don't have lethal just yet. I mean, yep, we have to, and that's not going to do it. Very unfortunate here for uh, for Modern Leper, as he's just been put in a really rough spot this whole game. Yeah, and he, he can mortal coil here uh, to yep, try and that's true. pull into something. Yep, uh, he has to, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh. Runs that. So what is he trying to draw here? He's trying to draw the game. <laughs> Ancient Watcher. It's not it. All right, he concedes. GG. So Luigi's is going to take a two to one lead in this series. It was a really unfortunate situation, I think, overall for Modern Leper. Uh, is that a case where it's just like he played pretty optimally and it's just, you know, the luck of the draw, it's typical RNG? Un unfortunately, mirror matchups are the most susceptible to draws in the yeah. game. Uh, Handlock is one of the more uh, intricate and complicated mirror matchups. I agree. I agree. Uh, but a lot of it does come down to who can gain overwhelming control over the board. I mean, right once now. you play a, a uh, Dr. Boom on, you know, just an Ancient yeah. Watcher board, I mean... We always talk about it yeah. like it's it's a, a really really terrible situation for you to be in, and especially since he hadn't drawn into second BGH yet. That's he had right. to shadow flame his Ancient Watcher and Dark Bomb, and that was his whole turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he just ended and then gave tempo again yeah. uh, over to Luigi. So it's a really tough spot as soon as you're you're at that turn seven, turn eight area where you know a lot of the big threats can be thrown down. Molten Giants can come out because health has been traded quite a bit. And uh, we just saw a very unfortunate turn of events. But, you know, a lot of times you just brush those off and you're like, okay, it was a mirror matchup. That happens. It's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Let's just move on. Anything could have happened. I could have won that game. It could have been reversed in that same scenario. It's going to happen just as likely as it did, um, you know, vice versa. And now we're going to move up to War uh, Druid versus Warlock. Mm -hmm. Now, Modern Leper is actually the only player to not bring Druid today. Respect, bro. Respect, and this is actually pretty surprising because there actually wasn't that many Druids uh, in the last week of Legendary Season, week number three. I find this matchup infuriating if I am the Warlock. Yes. I, uh, infuriating. I've talked to a lot of pros about this matchup uh, over the past week, and most pros will say they hate playing against Druid when they're playing Hamlock because sometimes you just lose. Exactly. Like, there's nothing oh, you can do. I'm tapping down. We're at, like, turn seven. Yeah. Okay, I'm pretty safe. And then they just throw out, like, Inner their... Inner bait, force a native Exactly. Savatory. And you're just... You're so sad. You're yeah. so sad. Uh, even things... I mean, th there are really cool ways that you can get ahead in the very early beginning stage. Obviously, with the uh, Shade of Naxxramas, if you're able to kill that very, very quickly, a lot yeah. of times you'll keep Hellfire. Uh, you'll try to get, you know, your AoE to be able to deal with those very effectively. But it's still very difficult. I, I mean, Mountain Giants help out a ton, but there are still ways to deal with those Mountain Giants in the earlier stages and then dr get draws. You know, we have our Ancient of Lore. It gets us back into the game. It gets us... Uh, you know, even in cards, or at least able to use our mana very effectively as we move on forward. Now, even though Handlock players say they hate to play against Druids, this matchup is a lot more even than a lot of people mm -hmm. would say, in in my opinion. Just because um, outside of having those really explosive starts and really explosive finishes for Druid, Warlock just outvalues Druids. Uh, yeah. If you get down a Twilight Drake into a Mountain Giant and the Druid hasn't taken much control over the board and, or doesn't have answers, then the Handlock can just win because once a Druid loses control of a board, 
they they don't get it back. That's just That's how right. just how the class works. They have to use like multiple spells plus Savage War and throw their creatures in. I, I think it's really susceptible to um, to RNG, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like I think it has one of the highest variances in terms of yeah. stability of win rates for an individual player. I mean, as you said, it is very even, and it's because it becomes very one-sided very very quickly like yeah. this is a tough situation for warlock like what are you throwing out you're gonna throw out the twilight drake of course we were talking about it before in last in last game where it's like do i to throw out the twilight drake do i want the mountain giant he's choosing the twilight drake this time because he doesn't want it to get his uh his mountain giant pgh <laughs> but you can still be silenced here yeah yeah i mean again it comes down to whether or not hey if you have keeper you have to have keeper plus something else yep to clear it off the board um, where in this case it's uh, just BGH again, and it's it's actually. Oh man. Hmm. I mean, he can put up more damage now, but I think he'd want something a little bit more beefy to come out of that pile of shitter. But it really, doesn't matter. Two damage is probably about the is almost the average. Yeah, and he does give up a savage roar for that, so mm -hmm. it's like okay, you put, at max have one more savage roar, we and you still have like 20 cards to to siphon through. Yeah. The probability that you run into that second Savage Roar is actually a lot less. I feel like, um, you know, obviously getting that Twilight Drake off is actually very, very important. Yeah. Because, you know, your Shade of Naxxramas is shown at that point. But it is kind of a weird spot now for Druid, in my opinion. Um, it's just a weird spot for both of these guys. Now, what do you do if you are the Warlock in this spot? Because, again, you're still scared of throwing at <laughs> the Mountain Giant and it being yeah. BGH'd. Yeah. I would still... It, it, it's really weird, though, because if you play Twilight Drake here, all of a sudden the Twilight Drake doesn't take out the Shade. Yeah. Because it's at 5-5. Five, five, five. Five. Um, but you saw last turn he had to use Savage Roar to clear it off. Yeah. So, Instead it, of, so he's, throwing, he's saying, uh, okay, you don't have a Keeper. That's very true. It's... Um, well, there are obviously ways of getting rid of this Twilight Drake at this point. He can attack into it, swipe... He could just throw down a Sylvanas, too. I mean, that's completely reasonable as well. Yeah. Push for damage. Although pushing for damage is a little bit scary because there is a lot of momentum that can be done right here. It's a really awkward turn. Yeah. Um, if you swipe here and trade in, you're super vulnerable to Hellfire. That's and true. And then you've basically lost all control you had over the board. Mm -hmm. And your opponent's in Molten Giant range. Yeah, and that's what you're 100% afraid of. That's yeah. why I think Sylvanas is is uh, really, really strong here. Yeah. Because obviously you want to throw down those Molten Giants, that's fine. You know? Like, I have a very good chance of stealing at least one of them. Whatever you throw down. Uh, Druid obviously in a very, very comfortable situation. And now what does he do? What does he do, TJ? This is push a, for damage? It, it's, you have to basically, it, it's a risk to go for face here. But at the same time, yeah. if you leave, I think you trade it. Mm. Okay. Okay. It's kind of weird. So he's, he's making it awkward. What he's doing is he's putting him at a, a weird enough health total to where he can't, like, get Molten Giants for free. And three mana to two mana is probably about the sweet spot just because you can only play one Molten Giant and then taunt it up. And, well, you uh, can put two Molten Giants. You, you tap Molten Giant, Molten Giant. And then taunt up. And then taunt up. Yeah. That, that's a little weird then. If, yeah. if you're going to put him at 13, you might as well just keep him at 15. Sure. With six mana. Sure. I think uh, his play is more correct just because he has two Ancient of Lores. It does get stuff onto the field, but the big thing about the Ancient of Lores at this point in time is just, like, it's four-card draw. So yeah. he's going to draw into something potentially very, very strong. Um, interesting spot here. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much an Ancient of Lore 100% here, so you might as well try and draw first. Yep. Just to see, maybe he gets like an innervate and then some big play that he can make with a wrath. Um, but yeah, it looks like he's gonna attempt to steal the Twilight Drake. Now it, it might be sort of enticing to try and just cleanly kill off the Twilight Drake and steal the Ancient Watcher. But what are you gonna do with an Ancient Watcher? Nothing. It doesn't uh, really have any value for you. Right? Yeah. So he might as well try and steal the Twilight Drake here. The fifty-fifth. Oh, that's a bummer. That is a bummer. Still 2-3. Puts a threat out there. Oh, yeah. Those two threes, man. I mean, I think the big thing is you're just having a body out on the field for Savage Roar. I mean, yeah. that's the number one thing. You want everything to things up on the field and then for me to place my stuff down and, uh, and be good to go. So any sort of board control is going to be really important here for the Warlock. Interesting spot.
I mean, he could go for a complete board clear right here. Throw down something. Okay. Um, so we're coming up on turn eight. You always have to be thinking in the back of your mind, how likely is it if I don't build a wall that I'm dead? Turn eight, I think you're safe. This is about the only <laughs> turn you'll ever get to play Dr. Boom and yep. be able to trade. Yep. So you might as well get it down now because it's going to be your best tool at taking control of the board. Agree. Uh, right now, what do we have? We have BGH six, four, Innervate wow. Dr. Boom. He's one point, one point away from killing him. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's six, true. Six, four, and then two, 12. Oh, my goodness. One hit point away from take, uh, from having lethal. Yeah, he does have strong turns, though. Yes. Um, he can BGH, Innervate Dr. Boom. Um, he might want to save the BGH for, like, a, a Molten Giant later on. So we could actually uh, use Swipe to clear it. Uh, but that's a little bit awkward because he did have to hero power into it or mm -hmm. um, or use Force of Nature, which he doesn't want to do. So I'd like the BGH into either uh, coin out the doc or sorry, interview out the Dr. Boom, or maybe even interview out the Ancient oh. War to try and look for uh, a Savage Roar. But I think Dr. Boom just puts so much pressure on the board. Right I agree. Now. I agree. Again, four, four uh, minions out on the board, which is a very, very tough spot. Yeah. Um, Four minions out on the board, and three of those minions are <laughs> three of the strongest minions in the game. Yeah. Dr. Boom, left boom bot, and right boom bot. Those are the top three Hearthstone cards. Top three, bro. I I've seen that before. I, I know what you're saying, bro. Yeah. It's pretty... Th there have been times when, like, I've been happier with the boom bots than the actual Dr. Boom. So. <laughs> like, if, if you just said, like, spawn... Two boom bots that deal one to four damage randomly. I would still play that card for like five mana. Do you know what the best part about it is? What? It's a gamble, and everybody loves a gamble. Exactly. Everybody loves a gamble. Like when when a boom bot hits for one, you're like, eh, yeah. whatever. I still have a seven set. <laughs> exactly. And another one. Yeah. Another boom bot. I mean, just think about it this way: uh, boom bots. They're two one ones that can do ten points of damage in a single turn. Yeah. And ten <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> You and know, then a one boom. from each, and then somehow you get them killed, do four damage mm -hmm. to something. Yeah, there have been times where I'm like, okay, I gotta try and clear the board here. And then boombots go face for eight, and I'm like, oh, okay, I have lethal. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always those those points where you're not even factoring in the possibilities oh. of what you can do. Oh wow, oh wow, big, big, but still, it's um okay. So let's see how much he has here. I mean, he has lethal over two turns. Yep. Is he going to be able to get it, though? That's the big question. He still is very, very scared. But he knows one BGH is given up. He saved two Molten Giants, but it's very hard to put down those Molten Giants at this point in time. Yep. Uh, it looks like he's thinking of Ancient of Lore and then Hero going power. for a face. Or going for, yeah, Hero Power. Getting some cards, just getting more options. Going for the face power. Going for the face power. Yeah. Oh, well, let's see what he gets. Oh, scenarios. scenarios. Okay. There's uh, a Savage wow. Roar. All right, so there's been a big debate recently between Druid players, and I've talked to a lot of players to try and get their opinion on Scenarius versus Ragnaros in Druid. Uh, Scenarius is sort of a little bit slower. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's better when you... Ragnaros, even though he's an 8-8 eight eight and he only does one thing per turn, he's considered a fast card just because uh -huh. he does something immediately as soon as he's laid, which Scenarius has the opportunity... might need to stall at the game a little bit longer, whereas Ragnaros doesn't necessarily do that. He's like, a, I want to either win now or yeah. salvage myself from losing right so now. I think the big reason why you would bring Ragnaros is for Freeze Mages, and you already have mm -hmm. threats against Freeze Mages yeah. with your Savage Roar combos. Yeah. So I feel like there's a lot of redundancy on very close turns. I mean, it's turn 8 and turn 9 yeah. we're talking about here. Uh, overall, I like Scenarius a lot better than Ragnaros. Uh, for that reason that I was just telling you. Um, just the ability to buff up your cards. You're getting another way to do lethal. You get taunters up there, which is uh, can be kind of frustrating to get at times when you are um, when you are druid. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I ain't no pro, bro. I'm just I just I just talk about the games. That's it. I just talk yeah. about the games. I mean, this is perfectly One fine. One damage off lethal. Perfectly but fine. He does have swipe Drew the Claw, so he can actually do eight damage next turn. So an anti Cubot comes out. He has to anti Cubot plus clear off this Ancient Floor. It doesn't matter. But yeah, I, I like that. That's a good point. And since Freeze Mage isn't as popular right now, yeah. because of, one, 
uh, druids, fast druids, mid range druids, control warriors, and mid range hunters are all popular right now, which yeah. are all just eat freeze mages. Yeah, and it used to be all like mech mages. Yeah, exactly. Mech mages, zoo warlocks. Exactly. And that's ordinarily what you want to shut down. For sure. Obviously, just the meta works in cycles so many times, mm -hmm. and it's able to uh, just siphon out different things. Weird turn right now yeah. for our warlock hero here. What do we draw into? I have no clue, man. Yeah. It's like the circle of light. What was the monkey's name in Lion King? Lion King? Yeah. Uh, um, R R Rafiki? Rafiki? Rafiki. Rafiki. I okay. think so. Yeah. Makes sense. Man, it's been so long. Yeah. It has. Really has. All right. And he's just going to... Uh, he's just going to concede right now. Indeed. He knows. Yeah. I mean, there's just so <laughs> way too many threats that could have ever happened right there's now. There's so many ways he could ki choose to kill him here. Yeah. Actually, actually, there's only like two, but so many ways so that he could kill him. So many ways. <laughs> well, he could have... Well, let's see. No, there's there's three. There's yeah. three. Three different ways. That three is so different many. Ways. All right. Wow. Well, Luigi's is going to take a 3-1 victory over Modern Leper. So, of course, these are GSL-style groups. Um, so Modern Leper isn't out yet. He'll he'll move on to the losers uh, match of of Group A, and of course, uh, Luigi or Modern Leper will move on to the losers match of Group A. Luigi's will move on to the winners match of Group A. Yep, and he has a chance to fight loser versus loser. And they'll do loser versus the loser with the winner winner. Indeed, indeed, yeah. Uh, but I we'll mean, that was really well played by Luigi's. A lot of it comes down to some deck choices. We talked about the Meg Shaman a lot, but Meg Shaman is just it's inconsistent. Uh huh. It's it's consistently inconsistent. Yeah, I that's mean, one of the reasons why it's good, actually. Exactly. I think shaman, when you throw it out there and be very, very aggressive. I mean, we've seen different forms of shaman, but the the variance is jo just so extremely high. And you're looking to get those those kind of weird wins out of it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Obviously, this time wasn't the greatest, was yeah. the best, but. Yeah. You got to throw it out there sometimes. You got to keep testing, pushing the meta, trying to make it so that you have different threats than other players, and then they're scared of that. And then if they start building against your your mech shaman somehow or another, if they start building against it, it's going to weaken their decks overall. Yeah. You get value out of sending out other decks. Well, in a way, since players are starting to put double BGH in, that goes yeah. against mech shaman just because it's the easiest way to deal with Fell Reaver. That's true. Uh, but even if these players lose today, they will have another chance. Of course, we did talk a little bit about it earlier, but we do want to give you a little bit more information about the Redemption Tournament. The Redemption Tournament is going to be, uh, happen this next week, of course. It's going to be May 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. Everybody that lost in the Legendary Series uh, weeks, in the regular season weeks, will have another chance. So we'll split those 28 players into four separate seven-player brackets. And the winner of each bracket, so four players in total, mm -hmm. uh, will move on. Uh, to the $25,000 prize pool land finals on uh, June 5th through 7th. Uh, so the next match is going to be Cross 7224 taking on Amaz. And we actually had a chance to speak with Amaz earlier in the week. So why don't we see what he had to say?